Uh, welcome back everyone to the People Track at Type 2023. Um, next up, I'm excited to introduce Christina Volmeck, Junior Professor at the Technical University of Berlin. Uh, Christina will be discussing additive manufacturing in applied mechanics, boosting interdisciplinary cooperation. Um, just a reminder to our attendees, if you do have any questions for speakers today, please do drop those in the Q&A tab on the right hand side of your screen. I want to try and get as many of your questions answered as possible at the end of the presentation. So I'll introduce Christina to the stage now. Hello. Hi, Christina. Hi, can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Welcome. Super. I try and share my screen now. Let's be Can you see my presentation now? Not yet. Um, yes, we've got it there. Thank you very much. Okay, okay I'll, fantastic. I'll jump back now. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much for your introduction, Laura, and thanks for being here. It's um, yeah, my sincere pleasure to be speaking here today and to be part of this movement. I uh, enjoy this event so much. It's so empowering. So. Um, I have to say, I'm um, coming from an another community. This is um, a very friendly place and lots of smiling faces. So I thoroughly enjoy this. Thanks to the organizers and all the volunteers that make this possible. Yes, so my name is Christina Felmecke. I'm based at Technical University of Berlin. And uh, I want to take you um, through a small journey of additive manufacturing and applied mechanics, so AM and AM. And um, yes, this will be a small but very dense journey because I am feeling very blessed and honored um, to talk about other people's work that happens at my chair. So um, I work with so many great people and that's why I would like to show as much as possible of what um, is possible at my chair. So um, I clustered the talk into four to give you a brief introduction of the university, the chair and the people and the facilities. Then I give you a very short outline of how we tackle applied mechanics projects. Uh, and then I show you some of our interdisciplinary teaching activities and later on also some of our research corporations. Um, for those of you that um, don't know the yeah. University of Berlin, um, well, that's based in the um, capital city of Germany in Berlin photo is down actually yeah. the um, Straße des 17. Juni, so one of the main uh, central Berlin. And um, back here, you can, you can see, see the um, Brandenburg Gate and also the TV Tower at Alexanderplatz. So Technische University of Berlin, this it's 27 faculties and we have about 33,000 students of which 34% are female students. So it's a technical university and um, uh, the faculty five is the mechanical engineering department. Um, we also have electrical engineering, uh, mathematics in the TU Berlin. But um, yes, my chair is based at mechanical engineering and there they we mainly deal with developing and optimization of technical systems, and it's even subdivided into seven institutes. And we deal with approximately 13 study programs, such as computational engineering, mechanical engineering, and so on. So I'm at the Institute of Mechanics, um, which is then again divided into five chairs, of which there are four full professors on permanent posi positions. And then there's uh, one junior professor on a temporary position. And I'm very proud to say that I was the first female professor. And now um, we also have one uh, female professor on a permanent position. So our institute deals with stability theory, structure mechanics, dynamics, continuum mechanics, and tribology. And um, yeah, my group specifically deals with stability and failure of functionally optimized structures. And uh, yeah, my chair exists since 2013. So let's have a look at the group. A fairly interdisciplinary. So that's me. I originally come from civil engineering, and then I have a um, postdoc. He's from a mechanical engineering background. Uh, two PhD students are from civil and uh, polymer scientists. 
And then um, uh, there are two student assistants currently, one from an art school, and you heard her wonderful work um, earlier on, that's Antonia Dönitz, and another one from a mechanical engineering department. So I'm very proud that I can say that um, I have 75% uh, female um, per percentage at my chair that's well beyond the average in mechanical engineering. And uh, you can imagine that in mechanics, it's even less. Um, yeah, so perhaps a few stuff because uh, we're here in the people section and I'm very thankful to give you an insight of who I am and how I came in touch with 3D printing. Mm, I have a very classic, say, engineering career. Uh, despite the fact that I'm actually a very creative person um, in my um, yeah in my spare time, I have to say, so I trained as a civil uh, and structural engineer, and um, in Germany and the UK, and then I worked for a consulting engineering company in uh, London and the UK, and I did my PhD in structure mechanics uh, at Imperial College in London, and then I went back to Germany to do my postdoc in uh, continuum mechanics. And um, then in 2013, I um, acquired my own chair as the junior professor now. My expertise uh, originally stems from nonlinear structure mechanics uh, scenarios, um, application based in, say, um, biocomposites, and um, now also in FDM 3D printed structures. And I'm also, um, yeah, feel um, that it's my responsibility to uh, try and achieve gender equality. So I'm very engaged in, uh, in that subject as well. Um, in 2017, I bought the first FGM 3D printer because I was interested in this technology. And um, since then, uh, it's been a hell of a journey. And so I will talk a little bit about this today. Um, I also happen to be the co-founder of the Women from Arts to Engineering community. I have to say this is a community that was inspired by types. Again, thanks. Um, yes, it's a community that I found um, founded with a colleague, Stefanie Marker. And our main aim is to achieve gender equality in academia. Um, we are working closely with students um, and professors, all working together on this um, aim. Antonia is also involved. Um, thank you very much for all your hard work, Antonia. And we don't have any hierarchy, but we all share the same vision to achieve an unbiased exchange across the disciplines. Um, I would like to say that I also am a happy mother of three kids, and they're all uh, they're age four, six, and eight, and they are all boys. <laughs> So have a look at the 3D printing lab. So the 3D printing lab is um, the manufacturing side of the 3D printing lab. We have four FDM printer. Um, that's uh, two Prusa printers, an Ultimaker printer, a Hyrule um, FDM 3D printer. And there's also an SLA 3D printer on that side of the 3D printing lab. And on the other side of the 3D printing lab, we have the experimental characterization part where we have a test machine that we acquired very recently where we can do our experiments. We have a to further characterize the material and where we um, yeah, um, dehydrate our specimens before we test them, which is not shown here. Is in the basement, we also have the possibility to do ceramics, and we also have a small-scale testing machine. Um, now, there is, uh, I'd like to show you uh, what it looks like when, when we work there. So we, uh, it's uh, not as tidy as it was on the previous pictures, but uh, it's a very lively place. And you can see Antonio. Um, super interesting stretch ten textiles um, to me and Nagas is working in the background on the tensile testing machine and um, for me this is a really nice place to go to work to because um, it's a very lively and interactive place where um, yeah students and staff interact naturally and this is um, fantastic um, yes so um, that's Give you just a brief um, idea of how we tackle applied mechanics um, scenarios. Not that I want you to learn this, but uh, just to give you an idea of what we're doing. Um, originally, we have an application based research question. For example, here in the structure mechanics context, 
uh, area. So we have a slender collinear lattice and um, the performance is limited by its buckling capacity. And so we improve this lattice. So yeah, that is called future materials where you have a high compressive strength in comparison to the density. Um, so we um, think about a solution and uh, in this case we came up with a structure solution where we introduce cable stays to the lattice. Um, so to change the buckling mode from like a C-shaped buckling to an S-shaped buckling and hence you can increase the critical buckling load. Um, then um, with this structure solution we methods we do geometric models, come up with a mechanical model and equation that is uh, dependent on the parameters in the model um, but then we also do a manufacturing in this um, respect here um, additive manufacturing so one of those is being printed in a multi-material uh, way do the experimental tests on the specimens to see what is the load versus display performance of that unit cell or the lattice respectively. And um, we can then formulate our research questions, which parameters influence the structure performance and how can we perhaps tailor the design of the structure configuration? What are the correct choices of, um, of material and printer settings and are the results scalable? These are potential research questions. And then this is rather an iterative process. We can forth, we print and we test and we think about our uh, mechanical model. So this is um, so much for an insight on our applied mechanics um, solution procedure. And, and now I would like to show you um, what we do in our uh, teaching activities. Um, this is where I feel very blessed that I have the chance to educate people um, well, as, as a reminder, I'm based in mechanical engineering department. And um, as you know, uh, thriving in an interdisciplinary environment is a key ability for engineers. However, what um, we actually observed is, observe is that the engineering curricula are still not particularly diverse nor interdisciplinary. We feel that there's a lack of interdisciplinarity within a the specific technical field so the topics aren't connected there's a lack of topics um, without direct uh, relation to engineering and perhaps there may also be a lack of topics that motivate women to um to uh, do engineering um so that's what Vina, if you've um, heard her talk this morning said um Women are reluctant to choose engineering because there is no problem solving really involved. So yes, at my chair, um, I wanted to do it and make a difference. And so we offer interdisciplinary project courses and we're aiming at uh, furthering students' understanding of manufacturing and sustainable development goals. So for example, in the mechanics and additive manufacturing, um, part um, or topics, we have um, two lectures. One is 3D printing and mechanics, which is a hands-on um, lab-based uh, project work in the 3D printing lab. But we also offer a rather theoretical class on slender and flexible structures. Um, on the sustainable development goals, Chair offers a lecture on um, that's called Engineering for Equity Think Tank. That's also a cooperative project work where we talk about gender, diversity, and sustainability topics. So applied mechanics and additive manufacturing is the main topic of my talk today. So my motivation to introduce additive manufacturing and mechanics was um, um, because I read a publication um, from 2018 where Lawrence Virgin um, the, shows examples on how you can enhance the uh, of buckling with additive manufacturing and he quotes that the advent of 3D printing provides scope for enhancing the teaching of buckling. And I can fully agree on that um, in our respect. This uh, really sh uh, makes the nonlinear mechanics problems more tangible for the students. And I will show you a few examples in a second. So we um, are offering the module 3D printing and mechanics where buckling, um, buckling 
questions. Um, you know the strut buckling um, and the standard mechanics curriculum uh, actually stop the load. But the interesting structural part is that um, beyond the critical load, you have a post buckling path and you can still exploit the structural behavior. And this um, for a simple structure may be relatively easy for students to understand, but for a more complex structure, that's uh, fairly difficult. And 3D printing offers us the opportunity to um, to grasp this behavior. But aim to the understanding of nonlinear phenomena uh, beyond the buckling using 3D printing and simplified mechanical models. We have an open source um, tool also to determine the forces. So uh, this is available at the website if you're interested interested in the tools um, we are using. They can be downloaded from GitHub, and um, you can easily solve um, um, structural problems. Um, the module is not compulsory; it's for bachelor, master students alike, and it's in small group projects. So let's have outcomes very briefly touching upon them so one task was for example the strut post buckling that was a um, challenging class because it was during the pandemic we all had to work from home but it felt like the students um, really took on the challenge to work in in their groups and they only met virtually and they didn't um, do any work in the lab so they used their own 3D printers at home. And um, here we wanted to investigate the, the strut buckling and post buckling behavior. So we couldn't do any testing in the lab. So they came up with a testing device where they you see the strut be here. And they 3D printed these parts. And then they had a stepper motor and an Arduino layout for the programming for an automatic displacement control load versus displacement and post buckling path. So this is really a great success story of an interdisciplinary group work and within the rather say um, yeah um, mechanics curriculum that's uh, usually not very tangible for the students. Another very exciting example is the for arts and cultural objects so the students had to um, had the task to wrap uh, a fragile object and come a packaging solution and they have chosen several um, solution designs here multi-tier solution so that um, in a drop test the nofretite bust um, wouldn't break and uh, that uh, was actually then later on also tested in the lab and successfully um, there are several other projects that um, I cannot all detail. We had smartphone fixtures, molds for bricks, for clay, improvements on hand procedures, always um, trying to think about the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So um, all I want to say here is that um, I feel with my uh, lectures, I Opportunity to explore new ideas and foster the curiosity of the students. So we have an application base, and um, so I want to make sure the students can roam on their creativity. The um, the difficulty here is that um, usually they do their work and then it's invisible. So I want to make sure the students' work is also visible. Um, so we came up with the idea of um, digital exhibitions. We are running several um, virtual exhibitions now. You see when you check on the website of the chat, and so you see a poster, a student, program, and you have these shelves that are three D objects of the three D printed um, specimens or uh, objects. Um, and you can navigate through this exhibition. And that's such a fun way of closing a module and giving the students the space to show their work. Um, I quickly want to touch upon the module engineering for equity think tank, because this is a module that I'm doing with two colleagues. And 
we're targeting the SDGs here, so gender equality, diversity and sustainability, and we have more than 50% women that are participating in this class. Um, we have one um, demonstrator in the mechanics section that is now available on Thingiverse as well. So we are building up a website on Thingiverse with uh, simple structural additive manufacturing models for mechanics and other objects. Also, you can check our Apropedia page for more details on, on this, where we have a broad variety of topics, so to say. Um, yes, just a very short uh, excursion on current interdisciplinary research projects. Um, we do a lot of uh, work on characterization of FDM printed materials. Uh, Tonya here, she's very active and helping in the lab with this, but I also have Neha Yadav working with me. Um, we, this is a cooperation with the Chair of Polymer Technology, and we print um, 3D printed test specimens, and we want to check the mechanical performance of these specimens. So you see here on the right hand side, and um, yeah, we print them, and then we test them in the machine can plot the stress strain curve and see whether, for example, in this hemp um, reinforcement, whether hemp influences the mechanical properties. Um, the PLA farming project uh, with Neha is a, diff a similar approach. Um, there, the aim was to um, improve the mechanical performance of PLA with self-reinforced uh, um, PLA stereo block fibers in the PLA. Um, we also have the possibility to look at the microscopic. So here you see a microscopic image of the PLA or PVS rather. It's a biopolymer PVS hemp. If you look at different um, yeah. uh, um, um, voids and uh, so we go back and forth things. Um, Another very interesting current cooperation, leading experts in the mycelium materials um, uh, um, technology. So that's uh, a fungus. If you're interested, you can see it here. I actually went there yesterday, and I have this um, this brick here. Uh, that's it feels uh, very interesting. It's like a soft uh, surface. That's a cooperation with. Um, Vera Meyer and Sven Pfeiffer and uh, Nagas is the assisting researcher here and we want to combine uh, mycelium materials with uh, biopolymer lattices to um, increase the performance of the, la um, the lattice and the mycelium and so this is a future ecological lightweight material and we are going back and forth optimizing the FDM printing of the lattice and uh, we are using the bridging effect here therefore improve the buckling performance of the lattice. So it's a combination, again, of um, various um, disciplines. Okay, last um, but not least, a uh, very exciting new opportunity um, is work um, with um, Antonia Dönix. Um, I find her very inspiring and I'm very blessed that um, she's working with me now. She's very talented with all her work and um, what I to emphasize is not work that has been done um, at the chair. It's Antonia's own achievement. Um, and please check her website. She um, does um, print on stretch textiles. And I see a lot of potential in this, um, in this technology. And um, yes, I'm very honored that we can look at this in further detail. Okay, let's um, have a recap of um, additive manufacturing and applied mechanics. So additive manufacturing teaching and research in applied mechanics. I think, um, yeah, this uh, dense talk uh, showed uh, what uh, is possible. And I feel that the open lab concept fosters our cooperative exchange. So we have um, no hierarchies, students and staff alike are discussing um, and solving problems together. Um, with uh, manufacturing and in the rather abstract uh, technical mechanics, um, I could make it more tangible with the objects, and I feel this is a great um, potential. 
And um, for me personally, I feel additive manufacturing now enabled me a large variety of corporations. Um, so um, it's been a very interesting um, but uh, a journey and I'm, uh, yeah, I want to take this further. So um, thank you very much for your attention. And um, at this stage, I would like to thank everybody who was involved, all the students and staff that helped with the research. And um, yeah, I um, still want to empower women further. And um, I think we can only survive if we stand strong in solidarity. So um, I am very blessed for having lots of strong women, but we are always open for new corporations. So if you feel that there needs to be change also in academia, please get in touch with us. And um, yes, I appreciate. Um, I think I would like to close my talk for now. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christina. That, that was great. Um, I, I just had a quick question my, myself, actually. Um, You've talked so much today about all the different kinds of areas in applied mechanics can go into. And, and I was really interested in a lot of the creative stuff you talked about as well. The fact that you said your background in engineering is very traditional, but you're also a, a really creative person. And we've seen so many examples of that today in the, the student work. W what are your thoughts on how um, we need to integrate more of that creativity into these en engineering subjects? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm think additive manufacturing opens this opportunity and I think I've been waiting for this kind of opportunity because <laughs> our subjects are so, um, yeah, so dusty, I would say. So I think, uh, but um, we, we always have this challenge that um, there are lots of people still there yeah, that I think this is the traditional way and it, it has to remain this way. So um I don't think I really answered your question now, but um, yeah, I think it's just a way of um, trying to show people that um, things can be um, discussed differently and approached differently. And perhaps then you empower others by just um, showing the this option, you know, it feels mm -hmm. for most people, it kind of feels strange at the beginning, but then they feel uh, they can start asking questions, you know, mm -hmm. um, See, people are intimidated um, to ask questions because they perhaps appear dull or, yeah. So this is a real problem, I think, in the engineering field from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And just the, the last thing for me, though, when you talked earlier about um, co-founding the Women in Arts to Engineering community, um, how can people find out more about that? Is there a way for people to get involved? Um, yes, well, you can check the website and send us an email and obviously get involved. Um, uh, yes, they, um, yeah, I think the website is the best uh, way to, uh, to get involved and, and check uh, what we're doing. We are Berlin-based, um, more or less, so we do a little bit of local activities as well. Um, but we would like to uh, invite everybody to get in touch with us. And um, yeah, we are trying to form a network. I think um, this... We have several festivals um, that we did um, previously um, that I have to say it was inspired by TYPE because TYPE was my first conference that I went to <laughs> where I thought this is actually a nice um, surrounding where you like to talk to people and they're like-minded. And I went to so many conferences where mm, the, the behavior is, yeah, you always pick on mistakes <laughs> and so um, that's how we created um, this festival and um, yeah we, we may join forces at some point or have some activities so just get in touch with us and great well thank you so much Christina great presentation thank you so much again thanks for having me <laughs>